Welcome in to our retrospective on Terp Talk and the impact it's had on the Maryland fan base and the founder of Terp Talk. Joining in here, it's Bruce Posner in his home studio. I'm Wayne in the Rockville studio here for Terp Talk. Bruce, you got this started a long time ago, but this is your story, so I'll let you tell it. Well, 2008, I had appeared with uh, Stan the Fan Charles in Baltimore on a weekly show, and I kind of had a, a uh, persona about talking a lot about Maryland. And, of course, I was involved with Maryland, and Debbie Yao knew that I was, you know, a Maryland guy and a uh, Terrapin Club member, a season ticket holder member. And she contacted at that time, uh, which was the uh, flagship, and said, we want to do a show with a Maryland guy, you know, in control, talking only mainly about Maryland sports, University of Maryland sports. And she said, I'd like Bruce Posner to do it. Now, I was already on the channel, so this wasn't anything strange. They came to me, and the, believe it or not, the rest is history. I started on a Thursday night show at 9 p.m., and one thing led to another, and I've now had Terp Talk on the air uh, for 16 years since 2008, every Wednesday at 6 o'clock. It's changed a little bit over time, but I've been at this time for probably about uh, six, seven years. And then a little bit deeper into the show, I met a guy named Wayne Viner, okay? And he won an auction to be a co-host with me one time. He came in, you know, and we did the show. And when it was over, he says, I want more of this. I want to do whatever I can do to be a part of this because you're really having a good time and it's really cool and everybody knows who you are and stuff like that. That was a few years into it. And then I had been dabbling a little bit in audio and YouTube, but I really wasn't uh, equipped not knowledgeability wise. And but Wayne was the best at it. And the next thing you know, we uh, broadened terptalk.com to include video and the rest is history. Me and Wayne and Mason and Jordan developed just a fantastic relationship based on the love of the University of Maryland. People say, well, what do you love the most? I love it all. But my go-tos are Terp basketball and Terp lacrosse, both men's and women's, and, of course, football. And uh, I never would slate field hockey. And that's what we really cover uh, on our shows. I am a lacrosse just freak goes back to Dave Cottle, and then when John Tillman came and Kathy Reese took over for Cindy uh, Timshaw, my daughters played lacrosse in college. And, of course, all the Gary Williams, there's no bigger fan. And that's, I just take that passion and I grow on it. It doesn't change. I live and die with the Terps, as does Wayne and Mason. And uh, they travel more than I do now as the years have passed, but I still make my presence felt when it's on the line. If it's NCAA tournament or uh, basketball or football or uh, certainly lacrosse. But uh, that's the that's the start and the continuation of it as I enter my 17th year. That's a, a pretty concise recitation there. My, my impression of how you and I got started on this is a little different. We'll get to that in a moment. But you talk about impact of doing something with passion that you love. And the biggest impact that I've seen recently is in the lacrosse world, where this has developed a one-of-a-kind voice in the way that you and I and Mason cover Maryland lacrosse. Have you noticed how big that's gotten? Without question. We are recognized. We are the go-to place, our website for post games and sometimes pre games and uh, the final four, which in the past nine out of 12 years is like a regular visit for us because of coach Tillman and the great guys who've played for Maryland. And that's why I wear that number one Jersey uh, cause it's so important to Maryland, but Wayne, it goes for basketball too. I mean, I I've been uh, at football. There, there is more coverage. So it's kind of like divided up a little bit more, but you do your, 
do do your diligence to make our football coverage as great as it can be. But wherever I go, you've been with me no matter what part of the country I run into Maryland people who know who I am. And it doesn't matter where I go, if they're college sports fans or when I go somewhere. And look, I get taunted, all right? I get, you know, uh, harassed by other fans, and none of that bothers me. And, uh, you know, so I've become pretty well known, and you and Mason, be mainly because of the videos, uh, have become really well known. So between the audio of my radio shows and the videos of both of us and your appearances on radio, whenever I ask, uh, we become a real entity in the University of Maryland sports world. You have to tell a story about you going to the UK uh, to see the soccer games and uh, people pointing you out. Unbelievable. I go to uh, Tottenham Stadium. I'm a big uh, my, my daughter married a big Tottenham fan in the Premier League, and I've become not a big fan, but I've become a fan and I follow it. So he wanted to go, and I told him, but took him for his birthday to a Tottenham game in the uh, Champions League, a really big game. And I'm walking down the aisle, and somebody, I'm walking down the uh, concourse, and somebody screams out, Bruce Posner, Bruce Posner over there. I turn around, I'm looking, and the guy says, Turp Talk. I can't believe I still follow the Terps through you, you know, and we had the greatest conversation in the world. And uh, it's not, that's a little unusual, I'll be honest with you, but it's not unusual for me to be recognized or people hear my voice and know I'm talking about the Terps. And I've had an answer for every Terp problem there's been. You know what I mean? In other words, why did we do this? Why is this guy still at quarterback? What's wrong with Mark Turgeon? You know what I mean? Are we gonna? What do you think of uh, Kevin Willard? Okay, and all kinds of stuff like that. I answer for it. Wayne and Mason always on the positive defense for the University of Maryland. And uh, listen, the go-to guy for me always has been Gary Williams. Uh, I idolized him as a coach. I know him. But he's not my best friend, okay? We just know him from the relationship, and he's turned into a friend. But I just idolize what he did for the University of Maryland, putting us on the map. But, uh, you know, just a great guy and so great for the University of Maryland. And that goes with all our coaches. And I left out Sasho. Wow, I feel offended that I did that because I do follow soccer. I go to games when they're around. I, you know, I always catch three or four home games a year. When they play UMBC, they used to play them all the time. I'd go no matter where it is. And uh, Sasho is the best. I really like him a lot. And just a winning, winning coach. And I know every coach. Wayne, you know that whether it's the volleyball coach or the woman's soccer coach, uh, they all know who I am because I follow it and we are just proponents. And I talk about it. I talk about it. You do. You, used, have a, you have a special relationship with John Tillman. Without question. John Tillman is, uh, I consider him a close friend with the happiness and joy he's brought to me over the years with the uh, excellent uh, coaching job he's done with Maryland lacrosse. I just really have a, a a little bit different relationship with him. And he is uh, a special guy. And I'll be honest with you, I don't have the exactly the same, but it's darn close with Kathy Reese. I know Kathy. I know her husband, Brian. I, I follow women's lacrosse. I get to, you know, as many games as, as I can. So many times they schedule against each other. It's ridiculous at the same time. But, uh, you know, and look, Kevin Willard and the basketball coaches, there's a hundred guys who call, who follow this. All right. There's, we're not the only entity there, but nobody covers lacrosse like we do. Nobody. And anybody will tell you that. Okay. And it's known Quinn Kessenich and Paul Carcaterra. They go to our post game shows to get our opinion on the team because we're honest. If we're up, we call it. If we're down, we call it. All right. We do a post game show after we lose. It isn't like only taking the joy ride of the wins, which it is a lot for lacrosse. And same thing with basketball. I, I would say in the past 10 years, Wayne, we might have missed 10 or 15 post-game shows for basketball. And it's only when they're playing secondary teams, right or wrong. That's teams right. where they're walkovers 
and maybe that day we can't make it or the game's such a blowout we just cover it uh, on the radio show or whatever and we but don't, it's been, but it's been a great to, experience go ahead we, well, we don't want to leave out Joe Beninati and the other guys from the Big Ten Network because they have a similar relationship Right, we know them all. Uh, ben and Nadi and you are close. I originally started through the Capitals, but Joe will come on the show whenever we want. And it comes to the point now where we've sort of become the experts, all right? If there's a big game coming up with Maryland, a lacrosse game, I go to uh, uh, Tony Wheeler, who's like in the Turp Talk family, or I might call Todd Carton, who's also with us. Certainly Mason and you, whenever we go to uh anything that's involving anything big with any of the maryland sports we have post games pre games everything and uh this has never been work for me it's been a love and uh my other shows my main other show is called the sports maven in baltimore on saturday and it's not unusual for me to start off with talking about who's who maryland's playing that day although that show is more Baltimore oriented, oriented with the Ravens and the Orioles, etc. But mainly Turp Talk, we cover whatever we have to. And uh, it's just been a blast. And Wayne's been fantastic with his videos and everything that he does for the show. Go ahead, Wayne. So I'm going to flash back to something that happened. You said it's 12, it's probably more than 12 years ago when I did win that contest and I got invited in along with Mason to watch the Turp Talk radio show at CBS Sports Studios. And it started with, it said, you'll be on for a minute. And it was the first week of football season. You asked me about my best game. And I started off about a Penn State game a long time ago that Maryland lost uh, 20 to 18. And we don't need to get into that. And when that show was over, you said, and I quote, that was great. Come back next week. And that that was years and years ago. And the other part, is when I got home, I said, I, I actually think I found somebody that might like Maryland, might love Maryland more than I do. That This was a, an instant match that was uh, made in heaven. And I know that Rick Jacklich sort of stepped into this before I did it, and he was ready to move on. So that was great. And when I said I wanted to bring video in, I remember the first day we brought in cameras and lights the studio. And the CBS Sports guys came into the studio and brought some other guys in and said, look at what these guys are doing. And for the first couple of shows, we actually videoed those radio shows. And that got a little bit of play. But you're right. The, the biggest thing that we get is the post-game shows. And if you look back over the shows that were watched the most that, that were interview-type shows, when Maryland went down to Texas and won that football game, that was huge, that DJ Durkin press conference. But now it seems that every time that uh, Maryland plays Virginia or vice versa, you know, those coaches post game shows uh, hit, hit, hit big numbers for us. Uh, Lars Tiffany's become a turf talk favorite, even though he's the coach at Virginia. The biggest recent hit was when Maryland beat Purdue a few years ago, when Purdue was at the time, I believe they were still ranked number two. Uh, so those are highlight moments that we've gotten to showcase. I know you go back and watch more of these shows than I do because every once in a while you call me and go, oh, I was watching when we beat NC State in a basketball game 10 years ago. And what, I what watch, drives you? I, I just love watching the postgame shows and our comments. And look, over the years, my, our biggest football guest who was regularly on the show was Stefan Diggs. I mean, you can't get much bigger than that. And uh, certainly – just to move forward to now, you you and Mason and Billy Edwards certainly have a great relationship. And I have a relationship with every lacrosse player that's crossed the field for us. And you have shared in that from uh, me. You know, right now it's Daniel Kelly and it was Matt Rambo and Matt uh, Mike Chaninchuk and uh, Grant Catalino. And it goes on and on and on. Uh, Connor Kelly and uh, all the number ones and all the other guys and certainly – uh, the goalie, Logan McNanny, and Brian Phipps, and going back to Dave Cottle. I, I, I could go on for an hour. I won't do it. But uh, we've just established a, a relationship with the players where they can't – they really want to come on our show. I mean, I you know, we don't overstep our bounds. We never do it. We don't do it. We, you know, don't do things on our own. 
but these guys see their friends on the show and they want to be a part of it. And uh, it's all positive. And, you know, when, when the Terps lose, we don't drag anybody on the show. We just move on, give our opinions and move on. But when they win, we're the greatest celebration there is. All right. And I've danced, I've sung, I've done everything uh, when we win. Because there's nothing like winning, and we're lucky to be involved with the University of Maryland because we do a lot of winning. We do. Yes. Uh, As far as actually getting to Final Fours and championship games, we've done really well. And, you know, it got to me that this actually stuck, and I think we were walking on the field on a Final Four, and a couple of cross players said, hey, it's Terp Talk. And I went, geez, I actually know we exist. So, So that was fairly cool. That that was pretty good. Now, lately, we've come up with a new, as technology has evolved post-pandemic, we've come up with something that's been an absolute hit, which has been, as Mason calls it, Bruce from Outer Space, but it's Bruce from studio after the game. And having, and we didn't talk much about how these post-games come together, but for the most part, there might be one or two instances of over a thousand post-game shows that has actually been edited at all. These are live no notes live on the field or the court after the game and listening to quality and seeing what we do with just having to stand there and go has, has been impressive as we watch the development. Having you come in from the studio has been a huge advancement as uh, we're on the field and sometimes you're in the studio or you're above in the press box. How does that work for you? Yeah, I think it's great. And because, you know, when you're on the field and you guys are getting the plays and everybody, if you ever want to see Wayne's work, Check out what they did at the Indiana game last week. It was beyond belief, the expertise they did in filming. But Wayne doesn't have the stats in front of him. Front of him. He's not looking at what's going on. He doesn't. He calls and asks me, is this guy hurt? He doesn't know because Wayne's on the field the whole game, and I'm usually in the press box, or if I'm not at the game, I'm home watching it. And we've been able to incorporate some expertise in him and Mason are not do not have available because they're not actually in a press box or not really looking at stats. They're worried about getting interviews, going to the post-game presser. And I come up with some like numbers and things that have happened that analyze a game in a level that we hadn't been able to do when we're all in the field together. Now, lacrosse is a little bit different because we're so close to the team and you don't have the kind of uh, coverage like you do in the other sports. But, with football and basketball, I think it gives a great addition of analysis to it. And Wayne will ask me, give me the numbers on Billy Edwards. What did you think? Where were his mistakes? What did he do right, wrong? And we do it for basketball, and it it's it just it works. That's all there is to it. And uh, uh, I'm looking you know, forward to doing this for basketball, especially as the road games come. It looks like the 20. 20- 425 basketball season uh, is going to be really exciting season yeah, we can't for the wait Maryland Terrapins. It. We can't wait for it. And, uh, you know, just being with Maryland and involved is is the love of our lives. All it right? has been. So I want to cover one more thing and I'll let you go. go ahead. Uh, you've developed a significant amount of young talent. Uh, one guy that's still on the air at 1300 and on 105.7 The Fan like a Cordell Woodland who started out as an intern. There's other guys who started out as interns. Um, but the number one intern that you started out with that's really popped in many ways has been Mason Jordan a little bit. So we'll go with Jordan just for a minute, and then we'll get back to Mason. Jordan helped put together the Young Terps podcast with Mason that has been rated number one by Best of the Big Ten as the Best Maryland Podcast. Um Jordan went on to be the sports information director for football at North Dakota State University. She gave him a scholarship, and the background to do that came from working on Terp Talk. He ends up at Temple as a graduate student SID, and now he is Fran Dumpy's right-hand man at LaSalle as they rebuild that program in Philadelphia. And his ability to cover the games and do his job started when he was... 14, 15 years old when he started interning with you, and he's taken those skills and really turned that into a profession. So that was some really good coaching and a great opportunity. Um, but your relationship with Mason 
and I've told many people, a lot of people uh, originally thought that you were Mason's grandfather. So that well, should I, so I, get, I get asked that all the time. Keith, Keith Cavanaugh, what's he, is he Mason your grandson? Yeah. And he kind of like is, you know, different in a non-blood way. Okay, because I've grown up with him or he's grown up with me as like a senior mentor. And uh, I've watched his career. I give him advice. We talk about moves that he makes. And uh, his work on ESPN speaks for itself. You know, he's covered so many different teams and so many different games. And uh, he's won. He is the lead successful guy of my interns, although we have the athletic uh, SID from Towson. I mean, my, our guys are spread all over. A lot of times from WMUC, they, they come to us from MUC and it kind of goes from there. Uh, I remember the kid from Canada. Uh, on the lacrosse team, but John, the kid from Cornell, I can't think of his last name right now, but you know, he, you know, I was told, how can you help these guys get along? Can you put them on the air? So we do that. But Mason has, I put him on the air when I had him predicting football games when he was 11. Okay. Cause I, his knowledge is unbelievable. And, uh, especially when it comes to college football. He played goalie because of the show. He got involved in it. And now, like, almost every goalie, major goalie in the country, and like you said, with Lars Tiffany, we get respect from coaches all over the country. They knew who we are. Coach Corrigan from Notre Dame. Coach Petromala, who's now who's now at uh, uh, North Carolina. And it just goes on and on and on with coaches and other guys in the field. And, uh, and, you know, it's been nothing but fun. That transfer is Jonathan Donville. Right. And, and the one that, and I'll close with this. So Bruce, being more of a lacrosse guy than anything else, goes out to the USA Complex out in Sparks. And he calls me on the way back from some practice thing and says, do you know uh, Coach Donowski? I was like, huh? He goes, the coach at Duke. Said no. He goes, Oh, he came up to me, and I believe you said he wondered when he was going to get his chance to be on the show. So, right. you know, if you get that guy, long, it goes a long way. You know, we have Kessinich on the show, we have Clark, we have uh, uh, Mark uh, Dixon, the Mark Dixon, we have a uh, Sheehan Stanwick on the show who covers, covers men's and women's. We have everybody involved with lacrosse when we need to interviewing and. I don't have to ask him to come on, all right? I don't have to, you know, when we get Scott Van Pelt on, we got to ask him to come on. Well, the cross people, they want to come on. And ex-basketball players, they love to come on. We talk about uh, Ernie Graham and uh, Jeff John, Baxter. We got Jeff, Jeff Baxter. Baxter. Uh, you know, Tony have, Massenberg started doing the post-game Byron shows. Mouton, I, we could yeah. go on and on and on. But uh, Sean Mosley, uh it doesn't stop. And, uh, and it's not Nick going Medley. to. Here's yeah. something you don't know yet, but James Gist has asked to be on the postgame show for the 24-25 season. So we're going to have a new uh, former Terp coming on and helping us with postgame analysis as we get you to the next season. You never know who's going to be on. You never know who's going to be on. All right? And win or lose, they're on. All right? But, Wayne, that kind of summarizes my role in it you know i created it you came by and you stepped it up a notch with the video there's no question about it and uh more important than that our relationship is forever and uh with you and your two boys and your wife uh connie and uh that about does it that does so for this edition of turp talk a look back all the way to 2008 when bruce got started uh that'll wrap it up and uh, in a future episode, we're going to talk to Mason about how beating Bruce and being on Trip Talk actually changed and helped develop his very successful life up to this point. It's a hell of a story. Thanks, Bruce. Thanks for this wonderful opportunity. We'll talk to you soon. Take care, buddy.